I got to tell both of you, I, gentlemen, uh, about something I've had for a while. But what was that? I, I haven't addressed it with Pedro or Jordan. Something I've kind of been sitting on, playing around with. Is it about... And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Ben, that's Jordan, and the guy next to him is Juan Pedro, together with you, Shat Realm Dynamic, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. You know what we're going to be talking about tonight. That's right. That's why you showed up. We're going to be talking about the update to Near Automata. Yeah, it's, yes. I mean, yes. for, it's huh? for, been four years, man. It's about fucking time. I know. Can't really think of anything else that happened this week that is worth merit. Yeah, there was we'll DLC something. for, uh, you guys plays DLC. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. We, we, yeah. I, I stubbed my toe the other day, and that sucked. Ooh, we, we could probably, probably get some traction out of that as well. But um, has anybody been doing anything, man? Um, I mean, Not I mean, really. uh, no, no, I, I, I made, I made a little bit of progress on my, on my dungeon crawl classics hack. Uh, I, I need to do a lot more reading cause I don't understand necessarily some of the, the gameplay structures of the spells okay. that I need to write for it. So now, now this is just like, okay, well let's, let's put these all out on like a board and like see what the various levels of effects are so that I can come up with something approximate to that. Peter Nerd I've crap. been playing um, Need for Speed World because I'm a boring human being. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I thought I thought you opened up that uh, wallet and like made a down payment. I I, I did. Uh, I did put a down payment on a um, Pine Time that that's going to be about three weeks before it gets here. So allegedly, maybe they'll we'll forget see. to send you a ribbon cable. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. They forgot but two things when I ordered the uh, the pine book. So we'll see. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Because you ordered the sealed one, didn't you? I did. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And I'm like ah, it's missing a room. And, I'm like, and? <laughs> they just come. It just comes with a strap. The actual smart watch is just gone. <laughs> yeah. So I, a couple of things. A couple of things I want to mention right at the beginning of the show. 357 days after I get a response from Black Magic, if you keep track of our lore, I had bought a Black Magic that clink quad to do these shows. And um, it, it never worked right with Threadripper. It had issues. And 357 days, 57, 58, 59 days ago now, um, I get a response back from the development section of Black Magic saying, hey, We'll get somebody looking at it. We'll work on it. I've just forgotten about it. You know, now we have a Magewell Pro 11100, which, you know, like a normal thing just works. I get a response from Black Magic. Like, what? Huh? What's going on? I think they've uh, found the solution for it. I'm going to test it. I'm not going to put it out there. Um, like mild, super mild potential security risk, apparently. Um, yes, but it does seem to be working. I also got a new tablet finally after eight months of, I probably really did buy a new tablet. I guess. Oh, some- well, I lost that, but the, the other tablet has, <laughs> the other tablet battery hasn't exploded before you got a replacement. No, I replaced the Google, the Nexus 10, man, that thing, I replaced the battery in that never again. Um, no, I got, I got the Samsung S6 Lite, which, um, after a day, I feel fully qualified to Tell you all the ends and easy enough to root, easy enough to get lineage 18.1 on there. It's a nice piece of kit. I got one that was refurbed for like 250 bucks. I'm very happy with it. Gets the job done. I can recommend it unless it explodes, runs off, kicks out my back door, and screeches into the night. Big deal. Whatever. I'm happy with it. Yeah. So I got a confession to make. You're a fool. Isn't that, are nope. you the burning fool? No, no, I, I, I had to get my brain mates to dodge that song. <laughs> like, nope, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to be humming that later tonight when I'm trying to go to bed. Um, so a new thing came out, Steam released a new thing. And, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. I got to tell both of you, I, gentlemen, uh, about something I've had for a while. But what was that? I, I haven't addressed it with. Pedro or Jordan, something I've kind of been sitting on, playing around with. Is it a butt plug? No. (laughs) 
I was going uh, sexual uh, toy, but not not butt plug now. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen. Um, no, I've had my hands on the stream deck. Oh yeah. yeah? Mm-hmm. No, you you did get a stream deck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll show it to you right Took now. Took some work to get it oh. done. <laughs> uh, I, I've had to like. There's been a couple of variations, a couple of different ways to get it working like I want, but I'm happy to report. Uh, it's a solid piece of kit. I'm, I'm able to show the box off. Nice. So yeah, let everyone fair. take a look at it. <laughs> this, this is the packaging for the Stream Deck. So I'm mm-hmm. going to be very happy with it. Um, I'm currently using it right now. But yeah, uh, mm-hmm. it's a good work, Elgato. Good work. Indeed. So, it needs more Linux support. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, some, you know, you know, you, the, the, the gamers have been praying, they've, they've been begging, shout, shouting out to the galaxy that they want a Switch Pro, and someone has answered their prayers, but it ain't Nintendo. It's, it's the Steam! Linux. Yeah, so we got, we got to thank Artharon. They were in <laughs> chat realm right away when this news dropped. So yeah, the Steam Deck, not the Stream Deck, not the Steam Dick, not the Stom Diarrhea. I don't know. <laughs> the um, Gabe Gear. It's the Gabe the, Gear. <laughs> it's the sec. It's it's the Valve Nomad. Um, it, it's a uh, Valve's brand new handheld. Uh, it's priced at about four hundred USD. Definitely aimed at taking on the Switch. There's a couple different models based on storage. Uh, the $800 Canadian. No, no, I'm just like looking at different versions and the 399 version, um, and freedom box only has carrying case. Do you think somebody's like, you just put something on there. Say it comes with a carrying case. Like, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> yeah, come with a, just it doesn't a even thing. come with a console. It's just like, it's, it's, it, it, this is like some Apple monitor stand shit where you just got to pay <laughs> Four hundred dollars for like the thing to put it on. No, um, but yeah, uh, the base bi- basic bitch version will get you uh, sixty four gigs of EMMC. Uh, the next model up will get you a uh, regular NVMe, and then the uh, eight hundred dollar model will get you a nice anti glare screen as well as the uh, PCI four NVMe. Um, and yeah, the 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 first thing that stuck out to me was the the controller layout. It's quite odd. Uh, also, I didn't I didn't realize it at first glance, but it's got some uh, squareolas underneath. Mm-hmm. Got the yes. got the touchpads. Um, the other the other big news here is this is the relaunch of SteamOS. This thing will be running a brand new version of SteamOS that has been on the back burner for some time. We've seen some rumblings, we've seen some stuff, and we've speculated on it. Uh, but this, this, based this, on this is this art. Is kind of, yeah, it's based <laughs> on art. Um, and the, the, this, you know, people were very skeptical skeptical about SteamOS originally, but this is years later. We have a very mature version of Proton that gets new day, games working within a matter of days within release. Um, I guess the other the other thing here is like it gives Valve a hardware target, Speeds doesn't it? You can say, yeah. So what we we, we yeah. got that Zen two four core eight thread uh, CPU uh, RDNA two GPU uh, up to. 1.6 teraflops, which is apparently on par with um, like the PS4, uh, that generation of console. Just ignore uh, the teraflops. Did, did that can mean literally. Okay, so literally oh, the thing course. I want to go ahead and like just talk about like immediately is okay. One, one of the main differences between the versions is the basic version comes with the EM, EMMC, uh, and SD card, and yeah, all the other ones come with M.2. But earlier this week, uh, it was revealed, or maybe today, I. I can't really remember. All of them are going to have an M.2 slot, but there's a catch. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they say that right on. So uh, they say that right on the thing. All models use that socket at 2230 M.2 modules, not intended for end user replacement. So that's a that's a good luck, fucko. You can get inside there, but don't come crying to me, us if we, that's uh, if the we break uh, it. warranty void if removed sticker right there. That that yeah yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. The, Go ahead, Pedro. Uh, I did like the the screen ratio, sixteen by ten, very nice. Twelve eighty by eight hundred. It it was Wednesday. I was uh, singing the praises of when laptops were twelve eighty by eight hundred instead of thirteen sixty six by seven sixty eight. That extra vertical thing, very very nice. Uh, the um, I guess they took notes from uh, Gamera slash Chimeras. Uh, they've been doing a lot of work actually making a version of SteamOS that's technically Arch-based, but they don't want you to call it Arch-based for some reason, so 
well, Valve was taking notes, and they're not opposed to calling it Arch-based. Uh, and yeah, no, the Game Gear was definitely the best alternative name that I heard. That now, was I do a clear have a, I have a very, very, <laughs> very serious question, is what is the point of um, having an audio subsystem? Because uh, audio doesn't work on Linux. Well, I mean, they I mean, do it, say that well, you can install Proton. whatever you want on it, so yeah. I guess if you did want audio, you could just, you know, load a haiku it's, on it. Oh, we should or, put or, this or up. Or Mac OS. It's a <laughs> because <laughs> some people are very, very stabby about this. It does have a 3.5 millimeter um, headphone track. It does, you know, that, bravery, unlike Apple. Or, you know, any, any sort of phone <laughs> manufacturers these days, they're really trying to get rid of that jack for no goddamn reason. Uh, but, but yeah, yeah. Um, so like they're, they're, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 it's running, it's running KDE. So I'm sure Pedro is very, yep. very chuffed. That's like the one victory for KDE in the history of KDE. So you know. as far as window managers go, KWIN does expose the most options. And if they want to set the, if they're, they're working on their own compositor still, which, uh, there was. Pierre Loup Greffet the other day released an update to a new version of the Steam Compositor that's not exactly just XComp MGR. Uh, so if you're not dealing with KWIN compositing, KWIN is the best choice in the way that it gives you the most control over the windows. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, so it, somebody, um, good news, but Valve came out and they dropped a tweet that um, I, th I think more than one person had a problem with, but somebody was very vocal. They said in their, um, they, oh, it was on the main page. They uh, have a Q and A section it's kind of aimed at developers. And one of the things they say is, you know, Hey, my game doesn't have a Linux version. Do I need to port my game to Linux to have it work on the steam dick? Um, and Valve just says, Hey, you know what? It's not going to be necessary. Your windows builds will likely work right out of the box. Thanks to proton. Yeah, we, we were we were talking. So there, there, there's like there's a couple points here. We were talking a little bit about this on uh, Thursday, Ben and I, during uh, the Streets of Rage stream, where we uh, we were theorizing uh, because there's now like a static hardware target. Maybe Valve's gonna be like, "Yo, you might want to start including some profiles specifically for the Steam Deck, so that your game will not run like complete poo poo." I mean, the the expectation is you're running it like um at uh what 800p or 720p so it's not going to be that graphically demanding on your eight core four thread custom navi 2 gpu it, it'll it'll probably handle it fine but still there's probably there's probably some tweaks that you maybe want to include the other thing yeah uh so flibit flibit uh came out and he was saying uh well yeah valve doesn't care about native linux gaming anymore and you know what uh, I kind of get where he's coming from, right? Like here's a guy who's busted his ass for a number of years, basically for the entire modern life of Linux gaming, uh, trying to get like controllers and audio uh, to a place that uh, has good feature parity with windows, even superior feature or superior features in many, many cases to some of the native tools available under windows. Um, and valve comes out and says like, Yo, you you don't really need to spit out a Linux version for our new console. I can I can see why he would get frustrated, especially because he's put he's put yeah. so much time and effort into trying to make Linux native gaming a thing. Now, I do think that basically boils down to what Valve is. Valve is a online retailer that sells yes. stuff, and you know the lowest friction way of getting your money. They're gonna be more than happy. To get that. And, you know, hey, Feral saw this coming a long time ago. Like, right when Proton came out, Feral went, hey, let's start researching Vulcan and let's do some Mac stuff and some mobile stuff because it was only yeah, going because... to get better and better and better. And when I say better, ease of use of that play button having a very high percentage chance of just working. It, it worked better than Feral's native ports for a lot of cases. That was kind of the I the, think the, sh the bullet through the heart. The, was... um, when we were waiting on that, that, I think that was one of the big turn things for Feral. While we were waiting on the official port of uh, Tomb Raider, the latest one yeah. from Shadow, Feral, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, yeah. Vulcan, yeah, Proton, and it's in infant state that it was in was almost doing sixty at 1080p. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what you were competing against, like good enough, and yeah. it's hard to do that R and D. Hmm. And and this and you know it's, it's a big I, I can see, 
I can see why he, why Flibbit specifically feels personally attacked because yeah, that was kind of his business helping other companies get their games onto na- uh, Linux natively. But we all saw what that push for the native ports uh, led to, and no one really liked it. Valve didn't like that Linux people weren't buying new games because, hey, guess what? There were no li- uh, new Linux games coming out for weeks at a time. No one really liked that. And Proton kind yeah, of alleviated that. <laughs> and and the, the the issue here is like Flibit was very much trying to attack this from the roots, right? It's it's a systemic problem. We need better developer tools. We need ways to get developers on board with creating Linux versions that are low effort. And unfortunately, this is the lowest of low effort options. So yes. I, I don't know. The, 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 the hippie kumbaya moon future is the stream deck does, or the, <laughs> the steam deck. <laughs> uh, get, get, get ready for that. Hang on. Hang, <laughs> okay. Hang on. Can you hold that thought? Can you hold that thought? Okay. <laughs> okay. Because I conducted a, a little bit of a science experiment before the show. I did. <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't, I couldn't help myself. So I headed over to Twitter and I, I tweeted out, Hey, how many kids are going to end up with a stream deck this December? <laughs> Lo and behold, Sandy fuck mothering Martin read that correctly. Not mine. His kids are going to get maybe. Some Maybe. Steam Decks. <laughs> then, uh, I'm not shaming anyone. Come on. Uh, a <laughs> FX Boy Forever, right? It's a gaming device with enough PC internally. Oh, what is that? Not enough? And, you know, I, I wrote back, I've never been able to get my Stream Deck to play games. And fuck it off <laughs> in that product name. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah th- th- this, is, this is absolutely <laughs> such a bad naming choice. What, well, I, to, to drive this home, man, I, I want to run this through, man. Um, Glenn, my kids are well behind me in the queue. And I want to know if he's getting a 32 <laughs> or 15 key version. Because, you know, I have 15 key. I wouldn't mind 32. Then we have Jeff. I said, hey, well, I guess it depends on how many will have to wait 22 uh, pre orders and all that. And I said, I've no, never, never seen one for sale in the same store. How many can they make? <laughs> we keep going with this. <laughs> and uh, basically, yeah, Sandy, you, you're the grand champion of reading. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> Sandy's you know, kids are not getting stream decks. This is and no, no, knowing Sandy, that, that was surprising. No, it, it's such a bad name. But yeah, as, as, as I was saying, the Kumbaya Moon future of all of this, and maybe the thing that will vindicate Flibbit in the long run, is Steam Deck becomes the actual thing. Like, um, you, we've created a TiVoized Linux gaming platform that is stable enough that we can actually point developers to a thing and say, like, we don't as long as you can get it to run on this piece of shit, you're good. That's that's your that's your minimum that. ask. <laughs> yeah. Then maybe maybe there is justification to say like, okay, well now people are playing this on this platform. This is a popular thing. If it takes off, now we need to justify actual performance like Linux native ports. But I don't know if that's gonna happen. Um I've 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 voiced concerns a lot about uh in the past about like Proton, like Proton Wine is kind of a, a tricky precipice because it defines Linux based on its ability to run the code of, of for other operating systems. And you're constantly going to be on the back foot when it comes to this. So event, so eventually there may come a point where we, we may run out of track that we can lay in front of us before the train runs us over. But we haven't hit that point yet. What do we think? Because um, they, they made some bold damn claims about, hey, Proton, uh, EAC, all this is going to work. Do you think that's because they're going to... I'm curious about. Because de- yeah. my only <laughs> thought, the only way you're really going to guarantee that to like some degree of certainty is like maybe it, it'll work on the Steam Deck because of this hardware. I'm like, okay, we can give you uh, this target. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, 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 we have some hidden Mac addresses that you can check for that's, that says that this guy's good. Or some shit. It, it's if it, if it's something stupid like that. That's or, or, I'm just like a hardware yeah. signature. I'm like, hey, all right, this yeah. is the, the current gen Ryzen and Intel chips have TPM modules. Windows 11 is targeting that. Why can't that just be targeted on Linux? Because too? Tim Sweeney wants a check from Valve, Pedro. 
And he's going to get it. Tim Sweeney is already other. getting checks from Sony, so. Yeah, but he wants a voucher. <laughs> I mean, because all of the, we need to create a fair gaming platform for you. The consumer goes right the fuck out the window when Valve's like, yo, you need to make that EAC shit work for us. And they're like, okay. He was uh, factually but, demonstrated to be a hypocrite in court. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to He was this. asked. Yeah, when he was asked if Valve had offered you a special deal just oh, for you, would you have taken it? Yeah. We, we don't we don't he want yes. we don't expect consistency <laughs> from rich people they're they're too rich to be consistent the um yeah isn't that right gabe <laughs> uh, well gabe has been consistent in not saying much of anything uh, about what, any questions so, that he's asked I, I think i think the the big clue we're going to see about the eac thing <laughs> is we got to keep an eye on uh, kernel patch notes because we need that syscall dispatch thing to be in place that's going to be the main component that's going to enable EAC under Proton to have a hope of functioning. Whoa, oh, what if there's a binary kernel blob? <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me. Um, uh, on, on, honestly, that wouldn't. If t- EAC is like, you want to play ball? You got to have this root level access that logs all your keys. This and thing blah, in the blah. kernel. We're going to call it Far Force. I mean, the AMD yeah. drivers already make use of a closed blob in the kernel. Good luck. Mo- if the- you think that your AMD drivers are truly open, go run Triskel. I mean, I Good mean, if, you're using an Intel Wi-Fi card there. You like that package that says Intel firmware that's full of blobs. <laughs> so one thing people might be wondering is how many of these were pre-ordered? How much was the pre-order, Pedro? Four pounds? Uh, the, yeah, yeah it was the reservation because if it had been like a full price this is thing, a yes or no I would question. No. <laughs> yes, four okay, pounds. Thank you. I, I paid the. <laughs> okay. So, um, Valve has not come out and released any number digits of saying how many units were um, reserved. Didn't really expect them to, but they cocked up. <laughs> they cocked up, <laughs> and apparently, you could pull this information. You could pull the reservation queue sizes. Um, you know who did it? The expo, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Pop, Pavel, the Steam DB, <laughs> Steam yep. DB, all the things. <laughs> so. We do get some final numbers before they fixed this issue. And um, North America, the 512 version, 55,000 and 256 at 28K. EU, 9.6K for the 512, 5K for the 256, and the UK at 7K for the 512, which... They're not showing the 64 gig one, (laughs) the EMMC version one. I don't think this one is long for the world. The 64 gig one, I genuinely believe that that base model is either being sold right at cost or maybe even under cost enough to, because this is the, this is the switch killer, the console approach. We got to get these things on the market and, you know, we can eat this many versions of this, you know, I'm not saying they're losing hundred bucks, 200 bucks. They might be losing like 40, $50 on this to get that price point speculation again. And, um, because historically Nintendo is the only one that's turned a profit on hardware, but just once they're out in the market, I see that 64 gig, especially, especially when you go to, I fix it. They're like, this is how you put the NVMe in it. That thing's well, and, gone. And, and uh, yeah. And I think, I think every, everyone is waiting on that video first. Before, mm-hmm. uh, before, uh, <laughs> I, I so listen, I know for a fact that if I try to crack my steam deck open, when I, when I get one, I will snap that thing in two and I will be ordering another steam deck. So I'm going to pay for the storage cause mm. I don't, because I, yeah, I, don't, I don't feel no. like uh, See, taking that risk. I have a 22, 30, 256 gig Keoxia SSD right here. So are you going to put some peanut butter on it? <laughs> nope. I'm going to get a Dremel and use a regular full size. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just, just, just. I like, saw the screw like holes just, uh, in the little renders that they had. There is uh, some evident screw holes at the back, so I'm hoping it's just take the screws out and then pop the clips out the sides. No, no, no. What you, what you got to do is you got to get like an NVMe to SATA converter and like have a platter, like a Western Digital Raptor on the back. <laughs> <laughs> you just duct tape to it. So that's, that's, that's pretty much everything we know about the Stream Deck. But Gabe doesn't want to stop with just this initial release. He, he wants to saturate the market with clones. He wants to effectively create a platform as if Steam wasn't enough. He wants a hardware platform. He wants this particular type of device like the Steam Deck uh, or the Gabe Gear uh, or the Ioneo or the uh, GPD, the latest one. 
they, it wants to be its own product category. And you know what? Okay, fair enough. Uh, the uh, article you can find it is from uh, PC Gamer. It'll be in the show notes. But yeah, it is very much just describing the uh, the Steam Deck and what Valve kind of wants to accomplish with it. They want. If is that a Mercedes logo? Market, no. <laughs> Probably not far not. off, but uh, no. <laughs> it's ah. the um, <laughs> abduction. No, uh, the yeah, PC gamer and loading videos. The um, if this kind of form factor slash gaming platform takes over, we could start seeing a new breed of games and a whole new platform emerge. That would be interesting. But I don't think okay. <laughs> Realistically, what I think we'll see is if this does launch like that, um, if it gets traction, yes, again. But, you know, I'm also worried about, I think one of the things that severely hurt the launch of the steam machines outside of Proton wasn't, didn't exist. And like that, that was a dumb at the time. Vulcan wasn't rolled out very wide. Like, and that was also a dumb. So it had like two big things, but it was also having... 11 versions of the steam machine at all weird different prices. And one of the benefits of the and console Valve undercutting them. Here's the thing. <laughs> this handheld doesn't have different performance models, you know? So the, it has, different, yeah, it's target. Yeah. Just higher storage. And I'm thinking about from the consumer, cause you're thinking about buying a, a steam. I want to buy a gaming console. We better do your uh, research for the gaming specs and what you can play and what you like. No consumer doesn't want to fuck around with that. It's like, buy me the thing. Yes. Is that thing just going to work if I buy it? Yep. Is it different than the other one? This one's got spoilers on it. Okay. All right. That, that's a big difference. It has a dog for your TV. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> and here, 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 here's the unfortunate thing about it is that th- this, this may happen. We, we see like the, the GPD or the Ionio or whatever, but those are all running Windows. We're not going to be seeing any more uh, machines running a Linux distribution. I, I at least I, I don't think so. You'd be very hard pressed, except for all the ones that you can already get off of uh, Amazon and AliExpress. Yeah, the, yeah, the, 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 those those po- those popular machines that everyone is salivating over right mm-hmm. now. Like, the ones that are cheap enough that people just buy and don't make a big deal about it. Yes. What I don't think is out yeah. of the question. You know, that, that, that's, is that's a good sign of success on the internet. There can be, <laughs> there quite possibly will be. Um, a, a shitload of confusion um, because I already saw somebody responding to Sweeney going, hey, we've never ported our game to Linux. Uh, we'll look forward to porting it uh, using Proton. This is the game developer saying this, to which I didn't write anything back because the only thing I had to retort was like, yes, uh, make sure you download Visual Proton 2000, whatever. <laughs> uh, but uh, th- there's going to be a lot of people, a lot of developers starting from square. I'm like, what is Proton? How does this work? I mean, it's way down the stack. But I do believe even, you know, if you're leaning on Proton, you'll probably have like a Steam Deck setting in a game. I, I could see developers going that far of saying, this is optimized. Put this setting on if you're running it here and you're going to get your 720p looking as good as it possibly can. One 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 interesting thing on that note is Valve did a pretty good job with Steam input and like sharing community profiles for mm-hmm. like uh, controller configs. So maybe something like that too. Like, oh, I primarily use my Steam Deck in dock mode. Here's a uh, optimized performance profile for that. I usually play it in handheld. Here's one for maxing battery life. That could be a cool thing to add to games. Again, gets people engaged, mm-hmm. makes your product better, and gives people an avenue to get what they want. So, all right. That that's it. We we did twenty eight minutes on that. All right, <laughs> almost thirty. Good night. Minutes. Right on. <laughs> well done. Now let's get into some regular steamy news, like client updates. Yes, this one is just a quick thing. It's just the roll up of all the betas uh, we've been talking about up until now. Uh, they've all been rolled up, and it's now the stable client released on July thirteen, and you can get all of the Linux specific fixes. Which this one actually had quite a few. The WPA three wireless network uh, crashes. They updated the runtime to um, Scout. the latest revision was uh, June thirtieth. So oh, there's that. The NVIDIA Vulcan ray tracing um, bits, and of course this isn't Steam specific, but it, Proton uh, enabling DLSS and everything else. And yeah, it is basically the PS5 uh, DualSense controller. 
that was introduced to Steam input. So yeah, it is a bunch of uh, great stuff. So if you haven't updated your Steam client yet, this is a good one to do it. <laughs> I mean, if you haven't updated your Steam client yet, you're probably on the mainline branch, which means you probably should. You're running really old software at this point. <laughs> yes, that's good. <laughs> we got a couple of games, though, um, and a couple of game updates. But we'll start with the new games with Color Breakers, which to me looks like uh, Pain with Friends. It paint with friends. Uh, it's uh, it's not. <laughs> it uh, it is described as a chaotic one to four player local and online multiplayer co op coloring game where basically yeah you have to either work together to fill in the whole thing as best you can and actually accomplish the little pattern that you see on the top, or you can just be a dick to everyone else and screw your friends over. Hmm. Which, or you could be the one yeah. person who's taking it seriously <laughs> while everyone else just fucks around. Yeah, there, yeah there, 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 that's there, the. There's many ways to play the game. Your friends over. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. No. It is. Uh, it looked all right uh, for. It came out on the new releases and it looked all right. So I sent the developer a um, a message. A De Leon. Let's get you so, to uh, that soon. <laughs> oh, yeah. Andre, thank you time. very, very much for uh, actually shooting some keys our way. So we will be having a look at that at some point in the future. Thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> it has online multiplayer, which is again, yes. why, why is it? Why is it noteworthy? <laughs> it's so it's so rare a feature these days that it's a like good thing to see. Yeah, you you have to mention it. it's like oh my god, you yeah. actually play this with you people. Definitely get a bonus sort of for doing that but um store picker is up next and uh yeah if, i'm do, confused do you as like, to what it is i mean do you do you like running around aimlessly <laughs> yeah we, we have it, it was an early access uh now it's not it's out it's available um or rather uh, i think there's a, just a new patch out um but yeah they have yes version uh, 1.0 is out now yeah. yes <laughs> 1.0 is a, apparently now there's 1.06 so there was there was another one in the interim but yeah it's if you like the map navigation of sea of thieves where you're just kind of given a map and you have to actually look at but wow those are some penises. desert penises yeah. Yeah. yes I, I just got completely distracted by rib that. for God. his pleasure rip for everyone's well, pleasure listen, you got no, those uh, legs you got to do something with them yeah. Uh, so if, if, if you if you like uh, navigation puzzles, like being given a map with no reference for where you are and you have to sort of figure out uh, your way to the various schools, this game is for you. Uh, there's also a parkour element. There's no real online multiplayer per se, but there is a leaderboard and they do track like routing and pathing goals. So you are competing against basically everyone else who's playing the game. It's uh, 22 bucks right now. Uh, it's on Linux. The system requirements... Uh, if you got a 750 or better, you're pretty much in the clear, graphics wise. It it definitely has a look to it. Mm -hmm. It it does, and it, I too was confused when we first talked about it, so I was kind of curious, and I saw oh, final versions out now. It's no longer an early access. Let's shoot them an email and uh, big kudos to Jean Remy, uh, the art director and composer, for sending us some keys. We will be having a look at this in the future as well. Thank yes, you. <laughs> I look forward to doing an entire stream just going, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? <sighs> oh, I, I look it, forward to me yeah. streaming this game and just running around in circles for an hour. I'm so fucking lost. Where the hell am I? It, it, we could do like a co-stream so you can find the most dicks. So, no, the co-stream is see if we can find each other. <laughs> so one thing that we desperately need more of on Linux is uh, first person shooters. Um, oh yeah, everybody's on the lookout Not for enough. that. Uh, yeah, terribly neglected category, and Splitgate is here to fill our holes. Now, I was kind of joking around a little bit. Yes, this is a first-person shooter, but with a twist. You'll never guess. Uh, Sci-fi pew pew. With you just saw it there for the video watchers. Portals. Aha, uh -huh. that could be interesting with a big could qualifier on that. Um, I played around with it. It is a chunky download, clocking in at 13 gigabytes, and it does use Vulkan. And um, dick around with the tutorial. It, I mean, it might be fun. Now, the big big news with this is it is available. You can try it. How much is it going to set you back, Pedro? Absolutely nothing. It is free to play. And uh, it, it while I was, I watched the video, and uh, I actually saw some people playing it on Twitch. It gives me that ballistic overkill vibe with portals. 
I, I mean, mm, yeah, it could be good. That'd be interesting. It's 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 <laughs> kind of just the generic Unity shooter look at this point. Yeah, it, it is yeah. free, but there are some there are a couple pay to win options. Uh, you get some you get some skins, and you get like the in game currency that you can spend. Uh, on more skins. I, 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 I don't know if they're purely cosmetic or if they have gameplay changes, but I'm yes, sure you do you receive can... 500 disco balls. Spillgate's uh, in-game currency is called disco balls. Okay, I heard Spill Gates for a second, and I thought like Bill Gates fell down and started leaking. Nope. Uh-uh. They're Spill smooth. Gates, is that his poor name? Sp- yeah, Spill Gates. See, that's, you that's, see, that's my poor that name. That could be their band. They could straight up be the, the, that could be Twitch Nasty. 100%. <laughs> It needs more hot tub. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's the thing. Go play around with it. Uh, something I want to give a mention and I, I look forward to like, oh my God, uh, is there was finally an update to near automatic tomato after four <gasps> years. And the reason I'm going to talk about it is because it was one of the first games whitelisted by steam for use with proton. Like, we guarantee you that if you buy this, it's going to work with a proton. Technically it worked with proton. Uh, it it had parity with the Windows version because it, had it issues. worked about as well. Yeah. <laughs> and you might have, if you're paying attention, they released the enhanced uh, PC version of New Old Near Replicant, and the internet was not very happy because with a uh, Near Automata, they released an updated version for the PS5s and the Xboxes, and you know with some fixes, some new lighting. And uh, updated cutscenes, and well, they got review bombed hard, very hard, like yeah. stiffy <laughs> hard. And they were worried about selling the new game and collecting more money from people. I'm like, well, you know what? You know what? Hey, we, we were planning this update for PC too. Don't worry about it. After four years, <laughs> not well, e- it was totally coming, you guys. <laughs> not even a single patch in four years. Now, what types of bugs might this fix? Well, first off, we got UI textures. They've been upgraded to 4K UHD. That's great. Fidelity FX. That that's the thing. HDR is there. Borderless you video settings. Active sharpening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, ambient occlusion and bloom. Oh, that's kind of neat. Bug fixes. This is the one that just made me laugh. Four years without an update. Keep in mind, uh, four years. The mouse cursor is no longer displayed in the middle of the fuck mothering screen when you're playing it with a gamepad. This was shipped. Not patched, not updated in four years. <laughs> you just and if you move the PC mouse gamer. and then went into the menu, uh-huh. but the why, mouse why don't you, cursor why don't you would just be reset in the middle like of the screen. Else. Now, let, be honest with me, Mateus. <laughs> didn't you just assume that was a Proton bug? I figured because we have seen that bug before with Proton, so it's like, oh, it's just a Proton hiccup. No. No. No, that was an actual <laughs> thing. <laughs> I, I, I tried it. I streamed a little bit of it. Um... I guess if you squint, it looks different. Um, it, it's near. Higher resolution textures for all the HUD elements and whatnot. Yes. And the FURPs are supposedly more stable. There's a couple of boss fights that I want to go back and try because when... It, I guess it has to do with the amount of just bullet hell shenanigans on screen the whole time that it made it it made the frame time a little inconsistent to the point where I couldn't dodge properly. Well, so, yeah. I want to go ahead and be clear with everyone. I did cut everything on 11, cut all the new stuff on, on my 2060 at 1080p, about 53. <laughs> yeah. I, I dialed right. it down to Sta- medium. Sta- stabilized at 60 frames a second. Ah, uh, well, it just didn't have enough horsepower. <laughs> For the default settings. If you yeah. leave it at the default yeah. settings, it's stable at 60. Now, one update Jordan and myself get to play around with is uh, Streets of Rage 4, Mr. X Nightmare. Going to give it to you, X... DLC. It introduced a new game mode, which was effectively a brawler roguelite. Pretty, pretty yeah. much, yeah. Um, the I think the sequence of levels were the same, but the the level layouts were different, and the the enemies were different for sure. Um, and yeah, I mean the the thing exists so that you can unlock some new move sets for your existing characters, which is pretty good. It gives you some additional longevity, uh, with uh, the game. Uh, the new characters are also pretty fun. Uh, Ven was playing Shiva. I was playing Estelle, and she she has this lovely ground pound that I just wish I was on the receiving end of. Um, so yeah. No, <laughs> Uh, Why do you say oh, that about all the characters in that game? <laughs> I just say it about Estelle. I only say it about her because I want her to crush my head in between her mighty thighs. Um, 
but yeah, no, it's, it's pretty fun. Uh, I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, it's, it's one of those things where if you're a high score chaser, uh, this will definitely give you some high scores to chase. Uh, and it's like, I, I would say it's worth the eight bucks for the, uh, for the for the DLC, that, currently that's my right now, if you jump position. on it, it's forty one percent off for Streets of Rage Four plus Mister X Nightmare. Now, I want to explain how the mechanic works because basic because we were wondering uh, last like why why is there a far gate? Like oh, that's mm-hmm. how you transfer because you're doing a simulation and you get done doing your brawler thing, you try to survive that, and if you don't die, you're presented with three power ups and. This is where the roguelite stuff comes in, because some things are like, oh, you uh, deal 100% more damage, but you also take 100% more damage. Mm -hmm. Or you get toxic punches, which is, that's kind of handy. I got one that uh, you gain health by punching people. I sucked at that. I wasn't doing enough punching. Yeah. But yeah, the, 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 the lifesteal, but no heals. Yeah. You can't, you can't take any of the poutine or pizza and I, I died pretty quick with that. And you do get an option in multiplayer uh, to resurrect your teammate at the end, if you manage to, um, but yeah, that that's, takes a move or whatever, how you'd want to. Yeah. It, it uses a power up slot mm-hmm. to revive, uh, but, and, and, and that's what ends up happening is once someone dies, it's a bit of a spiral effect. Because now it's just like, well, I survived, but I had three health left. So yeah. now we begin we begin the next map. Now I go through it and revive you, and then no one gets any power ups. I had a fun time with it. I well, I, yeah, it it was ve- way better than I thought it was going to be. I, yeah, I'll say yeah. that. And if you just want to go back through the base game itself with the new characters, and you also unlock moves too. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, you you can uh, d- depending on uh, how well you do in survival mode, you get XP for the characters, mm-hmm. and uh, you get some options. So you can you can change uh, their basic moves or their uh, special moves or some of their condo combos, and you unlock them like one at a time. And you can bring them into the base game as well. So if you want to try out some of your cool new shit uh, on the regular campaign, or if you want to try and go for the high score in hard mode or whatever, you can. Well, it uh, looks like we need to get ready to unlock the newest segment. Indeed. So coming up next, we got tags, we got pew pews, and I guess Game I Boy. guess we can yeah, you can watch it all on your Game Boy Advance screen. Yeah, yeah no, that uh, we've already hit the peak this week. It's all downhill from here, but you, you kind of expect that at this point. Uh though this week I think the peak is a bit more pronounced. You know why so, I honestly think they spent more money on the stream deck box than they did the stream deck. <laughs> They're not Apple. Well, I'm sure they would <laughs> wait, like wait, to be are, Apple. Wait, are, 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 are you are you trying to imply something about a deck in a box? What you meant to say, Pedro, is <laughs> they're only priced like Apple. They are not Apple. Yes. yes. <laughs> they want to be Apple. Certainly the price is right up there. <laughs> also not brought to you by Stream Deck. <laughs> you, you know, you know, as as Linux users, the thing we truly want to do is really just be Apple. That's why that's what Linux is really about. It's about making your computer look like a Mac without paying the Mac tax, right? The Mac tax. The, the Mac attacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, as close to Unix as possible without, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so if, if you if you want to help us build up our Hackintoshes that will then run Arch Linux on, uh, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Become a Patreon. You get cool stuff like access to our Discord channel. Get access to uh, the pre-pre-super shows. And if you're an executive producer, that gets your name in the credits. Well, any level gets your name in the credits. Uh, but executive producers get access to the pre-pre-super shows and they get access to the show notes so they can they could they can watch that like there's an epic of Gilgamesh length like wall of text in our show notes this week that is just notes about the Steam Deck. Yes. And you can if if you if you want to see that sort of pile of words and nonsense form over the course of a week, uh getting access to the show notes might be a good way, good thing for you. You can also um make uh, suggestions in the show notes. You can uh, suggest stories. It's all sorts of good stuff. If you even are financially irresponsible enough, you can buy your way on the show. We have an extra computer just for you. Yes, you. I'm talking to you, audience member, Phil, I guess. But wait until it cools off. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So it's it's, it's, it's a little little spicy. Uh, We got got a store, store store.linuxgamecast.com. You can buy wonderful, wonderful LGC merch like stickers, hoodies, T-shirts, Stickers, hoodies, more t-shirts, a coffee cup, maybe a tote bag, a mask <laughs> and a bag. <laughs> yeah. A tote bag. If, if, if you, if you want to have Frank on your groceries, you can fill your Frank full of wieners. 
<laughs> you could. I, all I know is I was promised a fanny pack at one point. <laughs> I want I want LGC booty shorts. I'm I'm still pulling for that. No. <laughs> You're just saying no because you know I will wear those LGC booty shorts on stream. Possibly. <laughs> yeah, too hot for Twitch. Well, I, I mean, I can I can always just put them on my wish list, which you can access by going to LinuxGameCast.com, putting your mouse over the support tab, and going down to that. Uh, you can you can buy stuff off the wish list. I have one. Ven has one. Pedro has one. You can also send us notes along with your lovely little gifts that we have to read within reason. And if you send Ven some stuff, um, you too may be covered. Your name too may be covered by his head. We will publicly shame you, not in just this show, but everything that comes out of LJC Actual. You will be publicly shamed for your fiscal irresponsibility on the fine upstanding cannibal wall. Because that's how we roll. We really do care. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you'll actually be able to read your name now <laughs> because you'll go below each show. <laughs> you know what? In all honesty, one, possibly two. After that, how, fuck, you're, you're going to be back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After how, that, how you go on the other Ven side and good luck with yeah, that. How, how, how small can Ven actually write? You know what? If I, if, I, yeah, if, I, if I was being sketchy for the studio wish list, everything would be like <laughs> mice type. <laughs> Yeah, no. but I'm not. They're they're precisely sized to whatever f- the fuck I feel like whenever I write them down. So yeah, indeed. Such is life. All right, regular normal news. This actually was going to be the big story for this week. It was then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then Gavin's like, nah. You need to talk about something else. What am I talking about? Uh, a way to improve browsing, filtering, and or searching on Twitch. And I thought you said you moved everything off your desk, Jordan's line. <laughs> Clearly not. Ding. <laughs> what was that? I don't even know. <laughs> that might, might be. That was the sound of uh, cutlery hitting porcelain. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any cutlery here. What the fuck? Ghost porcelain. <laughs> Ghost fork, man. I've been forked. <laughs> Patrick Swayze is like eating a salad in the back over there. So since day one of Twitch, uh, this has been a requested feature. This particular request started in September 22nd, 2020. And it was, hey, check this out. Well, July 14th, 2020. The, uh, no, no, I had it right. Dates and all that. Uh, let's get a Linux tag on Twitch. Not a category, just a tag. And this week, July 14th, on Wednesday, Linux tag is now live on Twitch. Thank you for your feedback. Here's some more feedback, Dowski. How about we get a <laughs> Linux category? Wouldn't that be neat? I think that would I be mean- neat. I mean, that would require people uh, on Linux to listen to something, and that's impossible, as we know. Oh, yeah. Audio doesn't work on Linux. We forgot about that. Yes, but you know what? We, we could do interpretive dance. We've been there. We got the chaps. Right? See, look at that. <laughs> Interpret that. I dare you. <laughs> and, the, so, so, so. and the closed no, caption you, is just us typing really quickly with our no, mad Linux no, hack source. It, it will just say furious wiggle. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's, it's just going to be entirely mosaiced out. It's way too foul for Twitch. <laughs> if I have time, I'll pixelate it tomorrow. <laughs> you should. 100%. Um, this it's is pretty nasty. cool. Uh, we. I don't know if it was because we used it like the day it went live, but on Wednesday, we we normally get like 60 to 80 viewers live because it's the middle of the damn day in the middle of the damn week, right? And um, we ended up with like 100 and something. So, I mean, there was a noticeable boost, but I don't know if, how much of that was just people going, there's a Linux stack? Oh, I want to see what's there. Yeah. And we had a couple of people show up and chat like, hey. Yeah, no, because I, I, numbers wise, I had a look at the Linux stack on that day, uh, there were like five streams, including LWDW, and I had a look earlier today, and there were 13 streams. So, yeah, numbers-wise, if you put Linux on the tag, uh, you're bound to get noticed because it's not a very popular I, tag. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna I guess I'm gonna try that on Twitch.tv slash Burning Fool because I have to plug my stuff apparently. Yeah, uh, I guess I'll start streaming under the Linux tag and see what happens. Okay, I want somebody to go ahead and put a suggestion in for Haiku. Wes? No, we we, we, need, we need a BSD tag now. Oh, see that? No, no. That, that dude ever managed to build OBS on Haiku? Here, here's the problem. That that's too real. Haiku. <laughs> Like, yes, there should be a BSD tag because I can see like system configuration and stuff like that. System configuration, PlayStation 4, Switch, that's all BSD. Mm. BSD native gaming, baby. Interesting, interesting (laughs) times. So we got a new wine launcher. 
from Hitman 249. It's not Lutris. Nope. It's not Lutris. This one is very much a prefix containerization effort. Uh, it's a software that basically creates its own containers for each wine prefix, so you can do what Lu- what Lutris already does with Steam prefixes and setting their own versions of wine and whatnot. But this one's different because it's not Lutris. The <laughs> <laughs> and it's containers. The, the The big thing here is the containerization. And this version, version one point four five nine. Uh, is it adds support for gamepads, which is kind of a must at this point. Come on, if that your wine prefix containerization thing doesn't let you play wine games with a controller, you're doing it wrong. And on top of that, Hitman 249 decided, let's, uh, let's add some other things on top of that. Like separate gamepad layouts for each game, so even like Steam does Steam input, and you can set your own uh, layouts for your game controller. Same thing here. And multiple layouts on one gamepad so you can hot switch, which is very useful for those games that don't actually account for that. And you have different styles of play depending if you're playing with a different character. You like the the buttons to be in certain other configurations. You can do that and just hot swap between them. That's very nice. That is very nice. (laughs) Bitch. How's this any better than my play button? Uh, this is for not Steam games. This is for wine outside of Steam. For Epic, ga- for Epic Game Store games. But That's shouldn't true. I just use my Epic Game Store? Humble games, yeah. Yeah, the, you, use, that, use that Linux client. Yeah. You could. <laughs> Heroic Launcher, yeah. that one. You could use yeah. Ludris as well, which includes the Epic. Uh, installation options as well. Yeah, if you're, if you're if you're a real <laughs> Linux user, you download all your Linux games via. Chrome. Pedro, that doesn't make any sense. Then I got to install Steam through Lutris. Why would you install Steam to play Epic Games? Because I'm, tr- I'm trying to design a better idiot. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe that sh- maybe that should be a new podcast. Build a better idiot. Let's see if we can come up with the Man, stupidest we way, thing ever. Yeah, right. I oh the, oh that, that okay. I know it'd be a small audience. But get to uh, the dumbest pull request. Not pull request, but um, issue. <laughs> yeah. For your open source can, project. Can, 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 we, can we actually give a software maintainer a stroke by creating an email so stupid? We, we could legitimately we have the <laughs> licking the outside of the glass award. Um, yeah. <laughs> We're trying, trying to eat a pineapple off a string. Most stupid email. <laughs> In a podcast format, <laughs> it's, it's no. This this is turning into that Monty Python sketch where they make that joke that no one can read without like dying of laughter. Yes. Like, this is this is basically what we're, we're proposing, but in in terms of an issue request. Okay, so this um, isn't retro because it's real true. It's yeah. You ever you ever want the source code to Defender? Fuck you know yeah. the the, ar- the arcade game? <laughs> Three mean, times I mean, a week. Here it is. Here here it is. It's, oh, there it is. It's it's the source code to defender you can run make on it and uh not everything i thought it would be yeah it'll it'll (laughs) it'll dump out a bunch of rom files that you can dump on an old williams board or you can run it in main because you are a uh sane person so yeah um that's just kind of neat right like it's the source code for defender this was in arcades once upon a time you had to pump quarters into a machine to play it now you can just build it on your computer this is kind of neat uh defender Compared to like what was available in arcades at the time, this was kind of like light years ahead of everything else. You know, the scrolling and the vectors. Very smooth scrolling, yeah. the going from one side to the other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Build requirements. What do we need? Build essentials. Why why do we need one? Uh some cap extract thing, maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, probably uh, pulling a bunch of the other um dependencies down with it. It's using Vasim. Because wine so has a lot six, of dependencies. Yeah, that's 68 or not yet is. There it is. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, that's pretty dope. I mean, I. Yeah, oh. like, there's there's not really much else to it. It's the fucking source code to yeah. Defender. That's neat. It's neat. And yeah. Considering how old it is, the make file is actually bigger. <laughs> So we might have been joking um, around a little bit uh, about having visual proton earlier in the show. Yeah, but uh, maybe chances are that you would like, well, not visual C. That was what I originally wrote in the notes. But no, Vigi- no, no. Visual J++? Plus plus? No, no, no. It's yeah, not visual. It's not visual. It, no, it's vigil. <laughs> <laughs> D- D- Dante's, yeah. Dante's Purgatorio <laughs> is just Visual Studio. 
<laughs> it's uh, effectively drag and drop C programming on Linux. It's called uh, CodeNect. Um, it's, it's not a very good name, but CodeNect. Uh, it is you know drag what, and you drop. Know what I, I, <laughs> compared to Steam Deck. The, we yeah, have I, a very. I, I, I think, uh, <laughs> Val, Valve has won, won the bad naming contest of the week. Like, I, I, yeah, no, this, this week on the podcast has been particularly prolific in bad naming. All right. <laughs> so, but yes, uh, maybe Code Next is a working title and they couldn't come up with anything. Whatever the case, yeah, you can effectively just... <laughs> you can... Uh, effectively create the usual drag and drop tile uh, type of um, any kind of programming that you've done in say Unreal or Unity uh, if you're just using the drag and drop interface you can do that and then you, it transpiles it to C using the tiny C compiler so that's actually kind of interesting uh, I don't think we had anything like that that was Linux native outside of the Unity editor but that was C sharp not um, C Code so, blocks. I don't know. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah it I is. mean, ha ha mm. having having that sort of visualization is useful, especially because they offer like replays. So you can like step through your loops. If you don't know how to use like GDB or something, you can step through your mm -hmm. code and actually see what it's doing. And, and yeah, you can you, just set it to run on to for a specific amount of time to see what it does in just that it, time. Yeah, period. It, it, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's baby's first debugger, but you'd be surprised how many people don't know how to use a debugger. So no. it's, it's, a, it's a good first step, right? Listen, this, this is my uh, level of expertise. When I made my Android clock app, I found that Google's code blocks for Android, and that's how I stuck everything together. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it's it's a good it's a good way to get started. Yeah, for sure. Pretty decent. Yeah. Now, we like to close out the new Ooh. segment with something that's also neat, but also uh, smells of madness. What is this Wednesday? What is this? A slice of pie? No, no. It's <laughs> GBA Remote Play from Rodrigo. So this is this is just the right amount of mental, right? Uh, if you want to play your games from your Raspberry Pi at 120 by 80 on your old Game Boy Advance over the link cable, Rodrigo. Oops, he got, he got to you, 240 by 160. <laughs> oh man, look 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 at look at Crash Bandicoot over there. That is uh that is uh that is a CRT flashback if I ever see that one. Um but yeah, uh there's a breakdown of how it works, how he actually got the GPIO stuff uh running so that you can display video on the Game Boy and also send uh, input from the Game Boy to the Pi. It's very very interesting if you're into that kind of stuff. Uh you can go scratch your head and read it and just wonder to yourself why it's it's just a reminder that people have way too much time on their hands uh but but but, but uh, it'll work on the uh, original gba it'll work on the sp don't try it on the micro apparently crashing on the micro <laughs> is a feature according to it's the, the, according to the get up the page. pinout so. is different on the micro yeah <laughs> and uh it is kind of insane how they got the gpio from the game boy advance to talk to the gpio on the pi that that kind of interoperability opens a lot of doors and I I want to see more insane projects building on that because yes streaming a game and playing it with the controls on the Game Boy and yeah the upscaling is done uh, you can either just do smooth upscaling and everything will look a bit fuzzy or you have the scan line upscaling <laughs> because it's a Game Boy Advance uh, <laughs> so yeah. yeah you probably want the scan lines it's, um, it's, it's a glor yeah. it's a glorified super nintendo let's be real so yeah <laughs> i mean that that was kind of what was amazing about it was that it was a super nintendo that ran off of two double a batteries but super <laughs> nintendo nonetheless it, uh, it, it's so weird it's so dope um i mean this goes deep okay that's yeah. all i'm gonna say but back to um the uh stream dick Wow. Come on. I, I want um, a, a stream link cable and I don't want some USB shit. I want some fucked up proprietary cable that you're going to lose and have to go buy another one from a third party later on. I oh, know it's, it's they're going to they're just going to reuse the USB C thing from NVIDIA. You know, the VR. Express oh, link or whatever. The VR link. You heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> ben wants e-waste. 
But <laughs> but here 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 like um I I, I, did, I didn't bring up when we we're talking about says uh, the, the guy who contributed by ordering one you fuck mothering dumbass. Uh, <laughs> I I know I'm a part of the problem and I never said I wasn't a hypocrite. So multi, <laughs> multi I mean I mean mea culpa absolves you completely right yep. Pedro. Uh, um, no uh, <laughs> I've gone through life with it so yeah. <laughs> I mean keep keep telling yourself that sweetheart. He can uh, feed but, himself. Uh, mo- <laughs> Barely. Yeah. If, if, if the micro if the microwave breaks, he's screwed because no, you can't eat the cold burgers. <laughs> I cook. <laughs> he can wait him out, man. Says you. Patience. He's, yeah, he's just gonna he's just gonna stick one in each back pocket and sit down on them for a little bit. Chest burgers. I mean, just <laughs> two, that, that's how you, that's how you do a tuna melt. Uh, yeah, du- dual screen gaming. That might be neat because you could you could do something like that with like having a, a sub menu or something on on the Game Boy, having uh, something else display on the main output for the Raspberry, and that that's the thing that you could potentially potentially do with the Steam Deck as well. I didn't say Stream Deck. I almost did. I almost corrected myself. Do it. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that, that one. But yeah, uh, asymmetrical gameplay. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do by having a completely separate controller with a full computer embedded. They experimented a lot with that with the Wii U and I felt that was like kind of underexplored cuz it's a it's a neat way to expand how games can be played. It's uh one thing uh, not to absolutely just go directly back to the uh Steam Deck. Um what type of uh, out- video output does that thing support? None. Uh what the uh the the deck itself or the Pie Boy? The deck. I th- it, the the deck has uh, <laughs> split port 1.4 out over uh, USB-C. Oh. Yeah. All right. yeah, and the dock uh, then offers either the display port or HDMI out. Yeah, that's going to be I, lovely I mean, th- with people learning for the first time about the differences in USB C cables, isn't it? Yeah, uh, the yeah. cable is built into the dock, so you can't really unplug it from the dock. <laughs> oh, that's another thing I, I want to talk about. That fucking dock. All right, that it's not a dock; <laughs> it's a dongle that you rest in. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I it's mean, like the Bell that, Dock, that's, that's like the WD-15 or the WD-19. When I think about the, the, a dock, when docks. I think about a dock, I think about <laughs> something that clicks into place. Look, it's docked. It's like, no, I'm going to set it here, then plug it in. I'm like, well, I could have done that without a thing to set it in. Well, I, I mean, the, the fucking Switch dock is literally just a USB-C port that you just pop a fucker in, right? Like, it's yes. Basic. Yeah, that, that, that's uh, like, but it locks into place and you don't have to like, there's not an extra step after you put it in the dock, is there? No, thank you. You just got to make sure that it got plugged in because sometimes you can miss. You, okay, that, that that is some next level coordination issues. But <laughs> <laughs> like, where's it at? It's in the sink. God damn it! Again, you missed it. Yeah, Fine. if you already yeah. have a WD, I was uh, yes, actually, WD? someone on Twitter was talking about the WD nineteen and the WD fifteen, like the old Dell docks. Mm-hmm. Those are the ones that I know. So the, those are the examples I keep bringing up. I Those would work because oil. they have, yeah, a display port over type C. So everything should yeah. work. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it's, pre- it's pretty standard. Um, and I yep. mean, like, yeah, H- HDMI and uh, display port use the same video out. So, yeah, of course, it's compatible. So anyways, coming up next, we drive around, do some sick loops. And I guess that's it. We're throwing chairs at Crash Drive 3. <laughs> Welcome back to the Cheer Acquisition. This week, we're hoping we don't crash while we're throwing chairs at a Crash Drive 3, developed by M2H, which my brain keeps trying to parse as a postal code, which, ugh. It's done on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about 20 bucks. What is it? Experience ridiculous fun in this cross-platform multiplayer free roaming game. Drive monster trucks, tanks, and more amazing vehicles across a huge open world. Level up, play events, earn cash, and lock new cars, and discover secrets. Uh, we got to thank uh, M2H for sending us some keys. Um, so, yeah, let's get into it. Pedro on KDE Neon. What did it do? It uh, launches out of the box. Uh, it runs very, very well um, on that forest level. If you're watching the video version right now, uh, it does have a couple mm-hmm. of uh, dibs, especially yep. if you go into the uh, the water. It, the FERPs don't exactly hold uh, 144 at 2560 by 1440, but it does a good job while you're, you know, uh, out in the open air, I guess. Uh, the graphics, it, it, it looks very, very, very similar to the previous one, if I'm honest. Crash Drive uh, 2 wasn't all that different looking. The S4 controllers, both the DualShock 
in the dual sense only work properly if you have Steam input on. The X input controller is like the Bimonk one or the If You Pro one. Um, those are X input, so those work fine out of the box. And as for fun, yes, it is fun, but it's the kind of frenetic fun that uh, leaves me a little Did mentally you do this exhausted. Offline? After. Uh, no, that's oh, all. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, all right, never mind. I you see can him. see the player yeah, list right. on the video. <laughs> uh, it leaves me a little exhausted after like 30 or 40 minutes of playing. Typical Pedro move. No, no, no. That that, that was online. That was uh, multiplayer full on. Um, but yeah, you're also dependent on which random events kind of get drawn up because you don't get to pick which event comes. It, the game just randomly determines which one's going to come up next. So you get either cops and robbers, or you get racing, or you get stunting, or you get tag, or you get... There's a bunch of different events. Variety is not at a lack here at all, but you don't really get a say in which ones you get to play. And if you like racing more than any of the other ones, hi, <laughs> right here, uh, then you're going to be just kind of going with the motion for most of the time, and then the racing comes, and it's just like, yeah, let's go do the racing. Uh, but... The maps, as big as they may be, and they're not very varied, to be honest, but uh, it, it, big as they may be, they do feel a bit cramped at times, and I do like the actual mechanics of like the stunt RC cars and minigame madness type of situation that they have going on. It is very much like Crash Drive 2. If you like that game, this is just more of that, so... I, I'll give it three chairs because I like the 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 second one uh, that was uh, the first one we actually played. So this one, I, I liked it too. I can't play it for very long in one sitting, but I like it. <laughs> yeah, on uh, Fedora 34, 64-bit with the, uh, no, the R9 3900X and the GX 1080 Ti. Yeah, uh, I clicked play and the launched in the full screen and then it kind of hung on a splash screen. And I did that a couple times, and then I realized, oh, man, I haven't updated the NVIDIA drivers on this box in a while. Why don't we try that? Uh, updated the NVIDIA drivers to uh, the 470 branch, and it seems to work now. Um, launches out of the box, holds 60 for the most part at 1080p. I wasn't really playing it at UHD because, I mean, let, let, let's be real. The visuals are fine. They get the point across. They're not outstanding they're not spectacular they show you a car driving on a road with other cars and you can see what they are so you know mission accomplished um the dual shock works fine uh the control scheme is pretty in on par with what you expect from any of these games where you're playing as like uh semi-professional racists uh fun wise i mean i fired up the game at two o'clock in the morning just to dick around and lo and behold people are actually playing this uh you can see that on uh Patreon screen right now um the, the HUD shows what uh, platform they're on, too, so looks like uh, cross-platform seems to be working. I saw a lot of people on uh, PlayStation 4. I was, like, the one guy on PC on the server I ended up on. Um, yeah, uh, otherwise, yeah, you, you, you kind of drive around a bunch. The game will sometimes give you stuff to do. Otherwise, it's really just Tony Hawk's Pro Demolition Derby, and that, that's it. You, you can make money to unlock the new cars and upgrade them so that they're semi-usable and don't drive as poorly because everything just goes flying. If you hit it at like a light jog speed, you just go flying up in the air. It's great. Um, and yeah, you just otherwise kind of dick around. I can see this being like a chill hangout game for people who like driving games, but it's a little too open-ended uh, and, and pointless plus the whole like Calvin ball element of like oh well now you're doing this and now you're doing this I'm sure it gives you lots of stuff to do but also I don't know it just doesn't really do it for me I'll give it two cheers ladies and gentlemen it I mean it ran fine over here uh, it does use Vulcan and it does use unity I can tell you that because once I started at my desktop I'll lock the hell up and went to about one frps per second because unity does that if you do not have compositing enabled also, it has an extra feature that uh, neither of these two unlocked. It's up no. fucking side down. <laughs> I shit you not, I launched the game. I even played a little bit of the uh, tutorial level going, this is a fucking thing. Why am I upside down? I guess it's because it's Crash Drive 3. It's wacky. Um, and of course, uh, I went ahead and 
hit Pedro up. I'm like, hey, Pedro, is, uh, <laughs> is this how it's supposed to be? Pedro's like, nope. Uh, okay. So I ended up having to smash that proton button, fam. And that's how I ended up playing it. No idea what caused that. I've never seen that happen. The menu, everything, everything's right, except for the game field itself, upside down. So let's look at the positives. The controller works, Xbox One XS, no problem there. And um, again, unfortunately, I had to play everything on Proton, a little bit of things. But it does run. I didn't have any chugs, Dinity P60, 2060, uh, right up until, as even Pedro mentioned, I hit that forest level. When I unlocked that, it started eating some poo. It, it was having some typical unity, like, oh, you're staring at the wrong thing. Let me go down to about 45 for you. Now, for fun, I, I want to put the emphasis on this being a $20 game. But you would think it was a freemium game because like, right at the top, it says, hey, free cash. I'm like, oh, okay, I need cash because I got to buy this car to finish the tutorial. It's like, like us on YouTube and Twitch and all, all those others at Instagram and we'll give you some money. Okay, you know what? I can. I, I think I can overlook that. Then I went to quit the game, and the game had a pop up that I had to click through in order to exit the game, telling me to rate the game. I'm like, hey, you need to rate the game, and da, da, da. I'm like, get absolutely <laughs> fucked. All right, <laughs> that no. I mean, again, twenty dollar game put the ads in, do stuff like that, or uh, don't make it 20 bucks. So we'll pick one. Now, to the game itself, it's Goat Simulator on wheels, kind of on a budget. It does look like part two, um, but now it's got a three on the end. There's really not much to it. Um, as I said, you drive around, you smash into shit, you explode, you jump some ramps, and you know what? That's not a horrible time, but you can buy new cars, upgrade, you can get a party van. That's a thing, and there's hats and stuff like that. Some of the modes are quite interesting. The... Um, like do the most damage to the ball or uh, jump through the hoops and the cops and robber. I'm like, okay, that that's kind of fun. And um, one thing I don't like about it is to what Pedro said, that all those modes rotate outside of your control. You just kind of get dumped into a general multiplayer collection and just have at until you travel to a new area. Then it's just more of the same. Can we all agree that camera can just, Oh yeah, that, that camera is fucking. <laughs> yeah, awful. it's annoying. That camera is one of the hardest things about this game. Trying to get lined up for ramps and the way it takes a <laughs> month to come back forwards after going backwards. But hey, you know what? I guess it's uh, like something to pick up and like fuck around with, possibly. But being 1989, I always bring this up. That makes it two dollars more expensive than Hollow Knight. So just keep, keep keep that in mind. I mean, it technically functions. You can play it natively on Linux unless you have a 2060 running Debian 11. Then it's going to be upside down, so you have to smash the proton button. Keep that in mind. And I that will say, weird. too, uh, that, that's <laughs> weird. Or, or, or just the, live in Australia. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Maybe you need to change the locales. Maybe I got the Australian version. Um, I've never seen that before. It. I would probably have a little bit fix that fucking camera. That was annoying. Don't don't give me fucking nag screens to like promote your shit. Uh, that that's a big yeah. One. No, the review uh, pop up was annoying because whenever I start the game now, it shows up as like rate us. It's, fuck you! I just want to what what, 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 what is get this? the fuck an Android out of my app? Face. That's what I felt <laughs> yeah. like. It was a freemium <laughs> game. Then again, like even at five bucks, but this is the full price indie game, twenty bucks, and there's even a Discord thing to run over mm-hmm. in, in the game itself. I did. I stayed the fuck away from it after I'm like, I don't even know what that's going to do. What's going to do open launch a browser or some shit. Um, uh, yes. <laughs> it literally just launches a browser tab with our discord server. Get absolutely <laughs> fucked with that shit. Um, yeah. Uh, if I could set up my own servers and invite you guys and we could play around. That would be good they, and set the mode. They do, they do have uh, they do have room code sharing. So if you do want to play with your friends, you can't. There is a way to actually find them, which is better than nothing. Okay, you you can find them, but unless the room's full, I'm guessing. Can you do like a private? Um, nah. nah, there's no private rooms that I've been able to figure out. Dedicated servers. What is this? A 1999. <laughs> my my own little server and uh, lock the mode in so we could have everybody playing one mode. I mean, just some basic uh, creature comforts. I would like to see. Added to this for that price. Mm. Mm. 
All right. Well, coming up next, we got some hate mail about uh, vaccine side effects. Yeah. Because this is the podcast for that. It's the end. Yes. You've made it this far. Uh, Chances are you're probably not even watching this. Most of you have already uh, skipped to the next podcast or clicked off of the video after we were done talking about the uh, Gabe gear. So, yeah, if you'd like to let us know if you're still watching somehow, uh, if you'd like to let us know how you'd uh, go about doing your own Gabe gear or what you're going to do with your Gabe gear when you get it, there's a very easy way to do that. Say Gabe you can gear just more. <laughs> yeah, say it like can, eight, say it like uh, twenty more times. <laughs> you can go to your bathroom at night and just light up a candle and say "Gabe" three times uh, consecutively in front of the mirror. Nothing that only works with Biggie But Smalls. then you can go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, and fill out the form. LGC Weekly is the topic you need to select on the uh, drop-down box in order to send some hate mail to this a very, uh, very foul-mouthed show. We are the bane of the Linux community because we uh, use naughty words. And we talk like this. <laughs> <Batman. Yes. laughs> so, check this you out. You merely adopted <laughs> the naughty words. Last week, Jordan had a good laugh. He did. Yep. Uh, he, he got his uh, scales on because it determined that uh, doing the uh, scales, the lizard people, was a lot cheaper than uh, covering yourself with mobile phones for the 5G joke. Yeah, I didn't have enough phones to cover <laughs> yeah. my face. I have a very big head. I need at least like twelve phones to cover this. We up. we couldn't uh, couldn't um, really make that one work. But you know that that was always for a good jab at the um, legitimate people. You know, there's been magnetism, five um, G, mind G. control. <laughs> yeah, like. And th- this is <laughs> nano machines. Uh, nano machines. Nano machines. Right. Son, it, it's been amazing, and. You know, did the goof, you know, hey, we're doing the lizard people. I thought that was funny. Had a good sense of humor to it. I didn't think we would get anyone to bite. I, oh. Right. Now, in fairness. But they didn't bite for that. Yeah. I it it, it was the mention though, because that was really the only time it was mentioned one. Like I'm no fine under no no ill effects or anything like that. This yeah. is now here. Here's where we gotta go, though, man. Um, it wasn't on YouTube. Nope. I, I, even YouTube. Batshit crazy YouTube. I was like, ah, it's a joke. I get it. It's funny. Nobody on Twitter. Mm-mm. Twitter. I was like, ah, okay, all right. That, uh, that's not too bad. <laughs> Nothing on Mastodon. We had to go all the way to the library. The oh, Odyssey. No. <laughs> <laughs> Home of maybe Nixon's pyramid, maybe not. <laughs> this is this is this is how deep we had to go to get this gem. I might have I might have made the title up, but this is from Heidi or he and I. Um, the only comment we received on this video uh, from last week with Jordan and his scaly makeup, <clears throat> it has gotten to light that many known. Or so YouTubers have been offered a thousand, right, thousand dollars or a thousand euros for mentioning these properly untested, va- properly untested as opposed to improperly untested vaccines yep. in good light. I'm just saying. A, I, 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 I want to speak uh, on all of it. Where the fuck do we sign up for that? Yeah, where, where, where's, where's yeah, no, my thousand dollars? What's some money then? Listen, listen, I would have put an order down for the fucking Numad if they had paid me a thousand dollars. Sold, but you know, here we are. It, I, I don't understand. Like, do you, do you get like that disconnect? I, I don't care if you want to get a vaccine or not get a vaccine, but not to look at you and like doing the lizard thing. Like, that's a funny joke. No, I'm going to accuse you of taking money from who again? Big vaccine? It's big, big, big Vax. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just a giant Hoover. Big Vax. And, uh, and unfortunately, unfortunately, I always get my hopes up. Every now and then I'll get like a, a screechy re-re, uh, like 
tweet or comment and you go check the profile either it's just blank and nobody's ever said anything or it's like oh that tracks that's all they do cre- 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 created six days ago it, yeah like. or, or it's just like <laughs> a long sorted history of cray cray I'm like don't you get the joke mm-hmm. no you're taking money from big Va- well okay hang on no the only logic you can apply to this is like of course that's exactly what you would say if you were yeah, if you were if you were an actual <laughs> lizard person trying to stop Trying to like so legitimate doubt. It's like it's it's the forty chess man. I wanted to like cut to a single shot of you, or you just hiss, and I do some subtitles about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Yeah, no. So yeah, we just wanted to drop that in because I thought that was going to be funny. And again, like do whatever you're going to do. But if somebody's doing a joke about scales, um. Learn, learn to enjoy and how where, where, getting where, where, vaccinated where, where, makes you into a lizard person. Yeah, wear, just just wear a mask in public, guys. It's it's not hard. Just wear wear a mask in public. All right, beautiful uh, people. On, on that on that hissing <laughs> hissing bombshell, we're gonna do that music. You can always find us around eight thirty Eastern Standard Moon Time. We're here live on Twitch. If you're a patron, um, Death Note or above, hop into Discord. That's something you get access to. And on top of that, we have a live audio stream for you starting at 7 30 where we discuss all the things that will be going on throughout the week if you're an executive producer you also get a live video stream on top of everything else up to and including snake jazz scream in my face at vinstone on twitter that's where i'm at and mastodon which went down for a few minutes which i you realize how many people Mm -hmm. use our mastodon mast.lenicamecast.com when that shit goes down like hey i'm like okay i guess people using that it's back up and uh yeah that's the thing yeah, I'm Jordan Swung, king of the lizard people, <laughs> dominator of mRNA vaccines. Bow before me. You can prostrate to me. Oh, at dude, the burning you, you got dominator of the M- M- mRNA vaccine. I'm the dominator of M. Night Shyamalan vaccines injected into you. <laughs> what a twist. Uh, follow- Might as well throw Scientology in there. This, is, this video is going to take oh, yeah. fucking three hours for you to oh, process. Oh, oh, dude, dude, man, like bo- body fetons are getting, are fighting the COVID, man. It's it's like, I don't know, man. Follow follow me on Twitter at the Burning Fool, twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. Hottest new star under the Linux tag, apparently. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Woo! Yeah, might as well. You know like you what? They should have at least p- picked the guy who was employed by the fucking NHS. That would at least. Yeah, no. <laughs> that would make too much sense. Yeah, right. I, I only got the first shot. So, yeah, no, my government issue oh, oh, nano machines yeah, yeah. are. Oh, clearly so, so the mind control isn't not complete active yet. No, no. This motherfucker's holding yes. out for more money. That's what it is. Yeah. So yeah, no. YouTube's gonna have to pay me those thousand euros. Uh, I prefer a thousand he, euros. He's only gonna do it for a thirty eighty. Like Thirteen hundred dollars at this point. All so right. yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> and you can find me at unaccounted for on Twitter. That's uh, the best place to get in touch. Or uh, if you're on Discord, you can just chat at us. Beautiful people, right enjoy there. some lovely loving credits. <laughs> I mean, you can just call Gabe Newell the Steam Double Decker, and it would still track. Yeah, and I totally forgot to do this shot too. Um, <laughs> so it's just me. Hey. Oh no, Invis- hey. Invisible Jordan. We got to thank our pirate Patreons, Jordan, our put advisors. Your shirt back on. No, never. Omegas, Artharin, free the nipples <laughs> by our executive producers: Aldius, Bob Ram, Scott Michaud, Mr. Fox Dog, Atomic Ass, Mike GMT, Drummer Seven, Holy Toast, and Kohaku. And I'll give, I'll take off my pants for our Chicago Kicks ass tier: Darkwing and Abstraction. Mm. Yeah, we got Jack B. Renault, L. Ryder X. Manaka, uh, Manakana. Yes, Druggy, Manakana, Justin Frostclaw, <laughs> KY Linux, Cass. <laughs> <laughs> and the Death Notes, Nova, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marson, System T, Craig, Renee, Leonardo, DeCresney, Kim, Smashly G, Chris, Stephen, Jill, Benjamin, Dumb, d- Dumb, Dumb, Two Dumb, dumb one, da, dum, Stephen, dumb. and Dirty Dean. Dunder and of course, Jeep. all the channelings. Incredible Lyric, Ross Moata, Vlaunir, Minus nine. Uh, Linux Nuru, <laughs> AJ, Belric. Oil of Hope, Eagle? which I will eventually remember to put on the next line. <laughs> next week. Next week. Gotcha. Daniel. <laughs> Frizo. Very beautiful people. We'll see you next You're week. all crazy. Uh, die, die in a um, uh, stream deck fire. Hopefully they don't explode. Five dudes. <laughs>